don't get me wrong, I love me some Taylor Swift, but her Shopify store needs a little bit of help. So I'm gonna walk you through her Shopify store and show you what I would change so that you don't make the same mistakes on your e-commerce store as well. Let's get started. So whenever you come to her homepage, you can see overall, this is her website. But if you click on this merch up here, it'll take you to her Shopify store. And so obviously it's a very different vibe from her main site right away. But I wouldn't say that the homepage is really bad. Like there's a lot of good styling. There's featuring products right on the homepage. It's not really an issue there. My first big issue though that I see is just really making it hard for people to find the products that they're looking for. So the navigation menu up here, we've got her albums all in one column and then all merchandise in another column, which honestly means that you're just having to search for more things. You can see here the Eras tour is pulled out and highlighted because it's most relevant and recent. So why not highlight that more and actually have that up here as a call out of the Eras tour? I'm sure a lot of people are trying to find some merch for that. So making that more of a call out in the menu. I think overall as well, just having maybe an apparel category and having shirts and outerwear, long sleeve, short sleeve, all of that highlighted there so that people have a clear path to go. If they click on the album shops and they come into a specific album, you can see here that you get the products that they are, are relevant to that album as well as vinyls or CDs, which I think is really nice to be grouping the products together in this way. However, there's not any additional grouping when you go into other other categories on her site, which is another issue that I see. So if we come in here and we click on shirts, we can see that there's just a lot of shirts that just start showing up and you have to just start going through all of this to find the one that you're looking for, which honestly is just going to be a lot of scrolling. I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of scrolling on sites, especially on mobile devices where it just feels like an endless scroll. You really want to make sure that you have filtering set up on your site so that customers can easily find the products that they're looking for. On average, customers give around five to seven seconds when they've hit your site to see if it's actually relevant for them and something that they're interested in spending more time on your site. So you don't wanna make people have to search around and try and find different things because honestly, they're not going to and they're just gonna leave. This is where filtering really comes into place. So for Taylor's site, I would definitely set up some filters. I would take the products to maybe just three products in a row and spend this whole section over here just for product filtering. I would filter out things like color. So you can sort by shirt color. You could do long sleeve, short sleeve, different styles like a destructed tee, different things like that that people are already going to be looking for already. You could also have them sort by album on the left-hand side as well so that they can quickly come in and say, okay, I know I want a shirt, but I want it from a specific album or I want a long sleeve or a short sleeve. That way, if you have the filters on your site, you can easily get Get people to start clicking in to find the product that's the best fit for them. Okay, let's go into a product now and I'm gonna show you a couple things I would change there. So the product page overall is honestly just basic. There's not really a lot going on. There's just the product photos here and this kind of big section is taken up by some additional information here. I would definitely condense that to be a little bit more of collapsible content in your Shopify store so that people can see, you know, a lot of people may not be ordering 10, um, but if they need to know product limits, they can see that they can order by 10. So having this as collapsible content to where everyone doesn't have to read this, especially on mobile devices where you really need to maximize your real estate, just make everything collapsible so that people can click in more if they wanna know more. Other than that though, on the product page, we've got some related products and recently viewed, but that's about it. It's pretty basic. So one thing that I would definitely recommend doing is adding in a reviews app. We definitely know that Taylor Swift has some diehard fans that would 100% leave her a review, even probably a photo or video review of them wearing this product. I would definitely add in a reviews app. My favorite for this is Looks because it automates the whole review process and makes it really easy to ask customers for review after a certain amount of time when they've received their order. And then they can add in a photo or video review or just a testimonial in general. And then you can use that not only to showcase on your site and feature that on your product page, but you can also use that in your email marketing, your paid ads, your social media, 
all of that to build that trust and then know, like, and trust factor so that you're building up the loyalty and showing that you're a credible brand. We obviously all know who Taylor Swift is, but if you're not as famous as Taylor, I would also recommend adding in an about section on your product page and on your collection pages. Keep in mind that not everyone is going to see your homepage, especially if you're sending traffic to your site through paid ads, email marketing, or social media. So having an about area on your product page is something that I highly recommend. You can highlight your founder or your story or your mission behind your brand. Get people to feel even more connected to why they should buy the product from you and not someone else. Having that on your about page can be really great, not only for SEO for Google and other search engines, but it also just makes people feel more like they can know, like, and trust you. So I definitely recommend adding that in. It doesn't have to be at the top of the site. You could have it kind of below the main product information before the related products, but adding this in is just gonna give a lot of extra value to customers that are shopping online. Another change that I would add to the product page would be to add an email newsletter in. If you go to her main site, you can see this big banner at the bottom of sign up to receive updates and special offers to join her email newsletter list. I would do the same for her merch site as well. Obviously you can get people that opt in whenever they are on the checkout page, if they choose to opt into email marketing there, but it never hurts to actually have it on your main site as well. So I recommend having a newsletter opt-in on your homepage, your product page, about page, any area like that where you're wanting to showcase a little bit more about what your brand and product is and adding additional value by joining your email newsletter. You can also incentivize people to join your email newsletter by giving them a discount for their first purchase or maybe some exclusive information or exclu exclusive behind the scene details like Taylor Swift. And so you can add that in to have that highlight of why they should join your newsletter in the first place. I love building an email newsletter list because you're actually able to own that audience. Unlike social media where they could just leave and never come back to your social media page. This way you're getting permission from the customer to reach out to them again and again, which is super, super important important. Okay, another huge thing that I would change on Taylor's site is that she doesn't actually have any upsells or cross sells that she's promoting to try and get people to spend just a little bit more to increase the average order value. Increasing your average order cart value is super important for small businesses, especially if you're spending money on paid ads to get them to your site or giving free shipping or a discount code. Getting customers to spend just a little bit more can really help with covering some of that cost for other ways that you're marketing your store. I love doing this with upsells on the site because you're finding products that are relevant to them that you know that they may already be interested in and it doesn't feel like it's a huge ask. You're just showing, hey, if you like this, you may also like this other product that they may not have seen on your site until you showcased it to them. So it's kind of a no-brainer to add in some upsells and cross-sells on your site just to showcase your variety of products and highlight other key products that they may be interested in. So there are a lot of different Shopify apps that help you do upsells and cross sells on your site, but you can have that in on the product page. So if you click on add to cart and they were to add it to their cart here, you could have an app that promotes, this is from a certain album. Now we're going to promote the vinyl or the CD for this album as well, because they're already kind of interested in this product. They may be interested in a similar product as well. So you're not trying to be pushy with it. You're just trying to show them other options that they may not know exist on your store, especially if it's not as clear in how you're grouping your products together. There are other apps that let you do this kind of upselling and cross-selling on the thank you page. So after you've already entered all of your credit card and shipping information, once you've hit that checkout button, it'll take you to a thank you page where you can add some additional offers there for a discount code and you don't have to enter your credit card in as well. So that can be really helpful to add in and again can just increase that average order cart value. Okay, so those are my top strategies that I would implement on Taylor's Shopify store to increase conversions. You know, if she had asked my opinion on how to make more money. But I hope that you found this helpful to implement on your store as well to increase conversions and improve your overall store design. Check out some other videos over here all about some e-commerce trends that I see for 2024 and things to implement on your site right now so that you can optimize your store and get more sales.